In this video, I'm going to take you through the setup and installation of the Acara E1 roller driver. I'll take you through the unboxing so you know what it comes with. I'll take you through how I've integrated it into Home Assistant, the automations that I've got set up, and even the integration into Google. If you'd like to learn how to do this, then stick around. Hi everyone, my name is Paul. Welcome to Project Smart Home. I hope you're doing well. So in this video, I'm going to cover the installation and setup of the Acara E1 roller shave blind driver. What I'm going to do is take you through the unboxing. I'll show you everything that's in the box that comes with it. I'll then take you through how to charge the device and some important setup instructions that you'll need to be aware of. I'll then go into adding the Acara roller driver into Home Assistant. And I tend to do that before I install it on the wall just to make sure it's all working. And then I'll go through the physical installation of the roller driver on the wall, the setup process. I'll then take you through the automations that I've got set up in Home Assistant for my blind. Once the automations are set up, I'll then show you how I've integrated the roller blind into the dashboard before finishing the video by giving you a demonstration of how I've integrated the Acara roller driver with Google Home and issuing voice commands to open and close the blind. If you want to go straight to one of the sections of this video, then please feel free to use the chapters below and just go to the section that you're interested in. Thanks for watching. So in this section of the video, I'll take you through the box opening, what's inside the box it came with. Uh, as you can see, it's a Zigbee device. And then inside the box, we've got the manual and I'll come back to that in a minute because there's some relevant parts that uh, I use during the installation process. So, you can see on the front of the box there, there's a brief diagram of what's included in there. So you see the charging cable, sticker, various adapters for the different chains that you may have on your roller blind, uh, and then the fixings that come with the device itself. So I'm actually using mine on my youngest son's Roman roller blind, and I'll show you the installation of that during the course of this video. You see we've got the nice 3M sticky tape. I've installed one of these previously and it is, is sticky. Uh, it's a good, good sound sticky um, connection to the wall. That's the USB cable that you'll need to charge the device. And then there's various um, connections for the chains for your blind. So depending on what type of blind you've got will determine which one of those you need to use. And those are the fixings that come with it. So for the roller blind itself, um, you, you can just pull off the, the one that comes with it and then push the new one on there. So you'll just need to work out which, um, which roller connection is best for you. And then this is the, the driver itself. So the top there that I'm taking off, that's where the chain, the roller blind chain will hang around that and that's the thing that will drive the, the um, up and down. And then on the bottom there, you've got the USB-C connection for charging and a reset button. So you've got the option to either attach that bracket that I've just taken off there directly to the wall with some screws, or as I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use the 3M sticky tape that came with it, and I said it's, it's quite quite strong stuff. So in the box itself then, there's the driver, there's the fixings, the various alterations that you can have depending on which chain you've got, and also the USB charging cable, which was a nice touch, and that comes with, with it as well. And that's it. That's the end of that section. In this section of the video, I'll quickly take you through some of the things that you'll need to know before you start installing the roller driver. So once you've unpackaged it, you'll need to charge it for two and a half hours. 
there's a USB cable that comes with it so you just need to find an outlet to plug that into uh, on a wall socket and then leave it to charge for uh, the required amount of time and then from a a roller chain point of view you'll need to attach the appropriate uh, spindle onto the driver itself I'm just using the one that came with it but you'll need to have a look at your size of your chain and make sure you're using the appropriate one it's easy to change you just pull them off and pull them back push them back on again with the appropriate one you want to use First thing I'm going to do then is get the driver set up in Home Assistant. So the first thing we need to do is put the device in pairing mode by pressing the reset button on the bottom for five seconds. And also in Home Assistant, put the MQTT into pairing mode as well. So the light was flashing there. You can see Home Assistant has detected the Zigbee device and interviewed it and is integrating the device into Home Assistant. So scroll back down to the bottom of the list of devices in MQTT. You can see a new one which has an alpha numeric name. So what we can do is then go into that device and rename it. So we'll give it a sensible name, something we can understand. In this case, it's going in my youngest son's bedroom. So I'm going to call it Jack's Bedroom Window Blind. Also going to change the entity names as well so they can be easily read and understood and associated with the device. So you can now see that the name's changed to, to something more sensible within the Zigbee interface. If you go into Home Assistant and we search for that same device, we should see it listed in there. And there it is, there it's listed. One thing I did notice that uh, once it's first set up, all the sensors are unknown at the moment. But what I did do is a few minutes later, I went back in to Zigbee to MQTT and I could see that the sensors had updated. So I guess it just takes a little bit of time for those sensors to update and get the correct information registered against it. So now just going into the Home Assistant interface, looking for the device, making sure it's there and just showing you the entities are updated now so we can see the battery and the device temperature for example and on the right hand side all the logbook entries for where I've been getting things set up what you can do here there's a couple of sensors that aren't enabled by default so just by way of an example you can go into those go into settings enable those if you want to expose those into home assistant as well and within 30 seconds they should be available for use as well. In this section of the video I'll talk you through the installation process that I went through to get the roller driver up and running. So I've, as you can see there I've put the 3M tape on the back of the panel that fixes to the wall. I'm now just hold it, holding it in place. I've put it nice and tight against the window frame. I didn't want it underneath the blind as it came down because it would act as an obstruction. So I've put it nice and tight against the window frame. The chains have got to be relatively tight. Otherwise you may find that um, it doesn't work properly and it'll, the chain will come off the roller spindle. So I'm just testing now that the device works without any problems at all. And now I'm marking it with a pencil just so I know exactly where to put it, where I've tested it works. So when I take the tape off the back in a minute, then I can fix it and make sure it's fixed in the correct place. 
So I've taken the tape off and now I've stuck the driver to the wall. The chain for the roller blind is nice and tight and I'm now just testing that the blind will go up and down without any problems. So the next thing you want to do is put the cap that goes over the spindle that holds the chain in place and to do that you need to break off a couple of the tags on the clip itself and then it fits over the top quite nicely without any problems. Now the first time I did this in my daughter's room I left the chains a little bit too loose and as the chains were rotating around that cap kept popping off because it was catching on the chains and um, so this time I've made sure that the the chains for the roller blade the roller blind are nice and tight um, so I don't have that problem this time. And as you can see that seems to be going up and down without a problem. So once you've done that and you're happy it's working properly you now need to set the maximum height and the maximum close and open depths. So the first thing you want to do is reset the device and in the instructions on page 5 it suggests that you hold the up and down button at the same time for 3 seconds that then resets the device to a, a clear state. What you want to then do is open the blind to its maximum position or what you want is the maximum position. Once it has done that then you press the up button for five seconds to program that as your maximum height. You then repeat that same process for going down. So you then close the blind, make sure it's fully closed, and then press the down button five times in quick succession to set that as the maximum open position. I've sped this bit up just to um, just in the interest of time. I will give you a live demonstration at the speed that the blind closes. It's not super fast. The driver is not super quick, but I, I, it, it doesn't really matter. I don't think as long as it does the job and opens and closes the blinds when you want them to. So that's it. It's now at its maximum open position. So I've just had to lift the blind up there pressing the down button five times quickly and then that is the maximum open position. So what I'm going to do now is create some automations um, to control the blind that we've just put into Jack's bedroom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to base it on some automations that I've already got in my daughter's bedroom but I'll talk you through how they work and what they're doing so if I duplicate this one and what we'll do is so I'm, I'm basing the trigger based off an input time variable so I'll change that to Jack's And I'll show you where that's set, but essentially in their bedroom zone within Home Assistant, they've got an input timer so they can type in a time of day. So for example, at seven o'clock on a school day, they'll have that set, set to wake them up at seven. And what that'll also do is open their blinds at the same time. So their alarm will go off and the blinds will open at the time they've stated in that time helper. And then it'll only happen on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, based on time, days of week, conditions. So that's passing at the moment. And then I've also got this um, toggle, this helper toggle, that again is in their bedroom zone within Home Assistant. So when it's school time, we want this enabled. So it just happens it's not school time at the moment. We're actually in summer holiday, so that's disabled. So this, this automation will only work when it's a school day. 
Uh, and then they've got that that actual um, school automation toggle is for all of the children. So I only have to change that once and all of the school automations turn off um, for the until I turn it back on again when they go back to school. But what they can do is and override themselves. So this one's for Emily's bedroom. So I'm going to change that to Jack's. Automations. To Jack's bedroom's automation. So if that's on, then this will work. So essentially for this automation to work, a time's got to be set. It's got to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and it's got to be school time and their bedroom or individual bedroom automation has got to be on as well. Um, so if it's at the weekend or if it's summer holidays, school holidays, then I don't want the blind to be opening until the kids decide to open them. And then in this part of the automation, we set how open we want the blind to be. So I'm gonna change that to Jack's bedroom window blind and set the position so we'll open it to 50% you could you could uh, stagger this if you wanted to you could say open 25% and then wait 10 minutes and open another 25% or something I suppose but um, this is just how I've decided to do it so this automation is complete then so Jack's the trigger is Jack's input time helper, which is normally set for 7 a.m. on school day. Uh, it's going to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but only if it's school time based on that toggle switch and only if Jack hasn't overwritten the, overridden the automations. I'll show you that in a minute. And then we're going to set the window blind position to 50%. So I'll save that to... And I always tend to give them start the name with the name of the room that it's in window blind open on week phase something like that okay so that's now ready so if i just go back to jack's bedroom and i'll show you these automation toggles so the input helper here is for seven o'clock but if you change that to eight o'clock or nine o'clock or 6 30 as long as it was on a school day then that would work and then um, Jack's automations is here so he's got that on at the moment so the automations will all trigger in his room and for every single automation whether it's the lights turning on sockets turning on whatever it may be all the automations in Jack's bedroom have that toggle switch as a condition so, for example, if he's decided to go to bed early, he's not feeling very well, I don't want any of the automations to work. So I toggle that switch just to turn everything off. Uh, and then the last one is, is the, the school holidays toggle. So that's off at the moment because it's school term. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, in fact, let's, let's have another look at the other one. So... If we go back into automations and go blind. Um, or I've got another one for Emily's when it closes before sunset. So I'll do this the same for Jack. So we'll duplicate that one. So 45 minutes before sunset. As long as Jack's bedroom automations is on and if Jack's bedroom window blind is open, no point running, no point closing it if it's already closed. So 
as long as these automations on and the window blind is open then it's going to close the blind completely so if I change that to Jack's bedroom window blind set the position do close here that would make more sense so we'll close it Jack's so let's talk through those. So this is to close the blinds before it gets dark. So 45 minutes before it gets dark. As long as the automations are on, as long as the blinds open, it's then going to close the blind. So I'll save that to Jack's bedroom window blind closes before sun, sunset. Okay, that's it, that's, that's, that's set up. So hopefully that was useful. So what I'm gonna do now is add the new window blind to Jack's bedroom in Home Assistant. So if we go into his room and then edit the dashboard add a card, horizontal stack, and then entity, get rid of these, and a window, window blind, Jack's window blind there. So that's the entity, and I think what I'm going to do is add the battery as well. Battery, so I can see how the battery is doing. So it's at 94% at the moment. Okay. So that's added. I'm just going to move that up a little bit. So it comes up towards the top a little bit more. So this is a, um, a dashboard that he'll have access to on his mobile phone. And I'll give you a visual representation of that in a minute just so you can see what it looks like. So essentially when he clicks on that, he can have access to opening and closing the blind. Now we've got the roller blind set up in Home Assistant. What I need to do is expose it to Google via the Nabu Casa integration. So I'll show you how to do that now. So we go to settings, voice assistants, Google, expose entities. So if I type in here, window, I can only see my daughter's blind which I've set up previously so what I need to do is expose entities window find Jack's Jack's window blind which is that one and expose that entity and there you go so that window blind is now exposed to Google for use and I'll demonstrate that in a minute. In the previous section then, I exposed the new roller blind in Jack's bedroom uh, to Google Home via Nabu Casa. So I should now be able to see that blind available in Google Home. So now I'm gonna add the window blind device using the application on my mobile phone, the Google Home app, add it into Jack's bedroom, and you can see there it's linked by Nabu Casa from Home Assistant. So I've now got full control of that device using Google Home as well. And I'll give you a quick demonstration of that in action now.
open Jack's blind to 50%. That brings me to the end of today's video then. I hope you found the content useful. I've taken you through a real installation of the Acara E1 roller driver in my son's bedroom. I've taken you through the automations that I've set up and the integration into Google Home. If you've got any comments or thoughts, I'd love to hear them. Please leave the comments in the screen below. Otherwise, um, thank you for your time and I'll see you at the next video. Thanks.